I, I don't even know what to expect. I, I know it's going to be fast, I just don't know how fast it is. <laughs> G'day, Stu from UOV Futures here, and today we're going to be looking at the Rotorex's brand new Atom V3. Now, in the past, I reviewed both the, both the original Atom V1 and also the Atom V2. I even helped write the manual for the Atom V2 a long time ago. I'll leave a link up here to like a Rotorex playlist, but the reason I'm so excited about this, I built this 3-inch on a 4-inch frame. We're going to stick it on the bench, break it down, have a look at all its components and how it comes because it definitely doesn't come like this. It's a really cool kit that only has like 14 solder joints, but the reason I think you guys are going to flip, this thing can rock a 5S battery. So 5S now is what some of the bigger racers out there, you know, the 5-inch people are building. And uh, I've, you know, I've got one, I've seen them, they go very, very quick. But I've never seen a tiny quad like this on 5S and I think it is going to absolutely punch a hole in the sky. So, let's stick onto the bench, have a look at some of the atoms, and get started. All right, let's do it. Look, they're multiplying. So here they are on the bench, and this is, this is I thought this was a cool little shot. So originally here, we've got like the 2015, the original atom with a bit of a canopy on here. This was one of my first sort of videos. I'll link a little Rotorex playlist up here where you can check like all the Rotorex, all the atom videos. So anyway, we've had that in 2015. Then right here, we had the atom V2, which uh, at its time, this was the best three inch race you could get Rotorex and TBS no one was making back in the day tiny brushless racers that came anywhere near the speed or the quality of these things and now this is what we're here for we have the Rotorex Atom V3 and you can tell this one I built on the four inch plate so I'm going to jump in I'm going to show you the whole kit and caboodle everything that it came with and some really cool extras and uh, we'll sort of dive in have a look at how it comes together and all the really cool components all right let's do it in three two one radio so here it is here's a lot of the stuff you're going to get in the kit obviously depending on what you want to get there's some extras but this is all the stuff we want to talk about with the Atom V3 so very quickly we're going to go through all these in details but we're going to in details in detail we're going to start off uh, this is what we're going to be covering so we're going to be having a look at the frame and I say or oh, frames I should say because you can see we've got two frames right here we've got a pretty chunky pretty awesome motors right here we've got some little uh, camera mounts this is one of the stars of the show right here this is like the RX cube some really really cool stuff in there that's pretty much like the whole build it's super easy to put together we've got our FPV camera camera, our FPV antenna options, a little power lead, uh, we've got uh, some LEDs if you're going to use them on the 3 inch frame, and also, uh, pretty excitingly, this pretty special little 1080p special recorder made just for these atoms. Anyway, what we're going to do, let's jump in, we're going to start it off by kicking it off, having a look at the frame, because that's probably the most exciting part, and uh, there's also going to be some other options as well, I'll talk about, like, I'm going to show you some crazy 5S batteries, and also the Rotor X charger. Anyway, enough rambling, let's jump in and check out the frame. So looking at the frame, we've actually, you notice we've got two options here and that's because we've got the four inch over here, which honestly I am so excited about. And then we've got the pretty traditional three inch. I don't think the frame has changed too much. You do have some different little cutouts and there's some different little zip ties and those sorts of things versus the old V2 version, which I was very fond of. Uh, of course, this one's made for three inch propellers. This one's made for four inch propellers. Both frames are coming in at about four millimeters thick. So you can see right there, four millimeters thick. Now something pretty cool about this frame, what I do like, they've milled out this little part. So that's going to make for a bit of room it's going to allow our rx cube to sit very very snug and we'll talk about this in a minute is it going to make it a little bit weaker i'd say yeah a little bit thankfully it's not on the arms or anything like that and you still do have that nice big thick four inch around a uh, four inch you have that nice big thick four millimeter around the outside so the frames look they're they're a pretty standard little thing nowadays they're in the dead cat style so the front arms it's not like a true x or anything like that or even a stretched x the front arms are definitely splayed out a lot more and i think really that seems to be working for rotor x because i know their original atoms were a huge success and a ton of people have been flying them. Now uh, one really cool thing is how well everything fits inside the frame and Rotorex was sort of the first people who were making tiny brushless quadcopters. You've got to remember back in the day when Rotorex started with the original Atom everything we were flying was absolutely massive so it's really really cool to see you know what these guys are doing uh, I guess in today's market because there is a lot more smaller quads out there. So let's move on let's have a look at the components wood we put in there let's check out the RX cube because honestly the Rotorex cube I should say because this is one of the stars of the show. Now Rotorex again has teamed up with TBS and honestly I think TBS makes some of the most the best the best gear in the biz they make absolutely fantastic stuff but at the same time it's also pretty pricey compared to what else you can get out there so you're definitely paying top 
top dollar, but you're getting a top product. So what do we actually have in this cube? So on the top, this is pretty much, there's, I should mention too, it's so easy to solder all this up, but to, you know, you can build it in under 30 minutes, which is crazy for a DIY kit. And that's probably because this cube is doing most of the work. It comes pre-assembled and really there's not too many solder joints you have to really worry about. Now on the top here, this is our flight controller. This is the Calibri V2. Uh, it's rocking beta flight 3.0, but I'm sure there'll be an upgrade. You can plug it into your little computer or do all the upgrades, put it to the latest beta flight version. Uh, and it's an F3 board. So look, not too much to say right there. Underneath we have some little stars of the show as well. They have changes significantly from the original Atom V2. So look, I'm going to flash some pictures on the screen, but underneath there we've got our, I guess they're two in one ESC. So no longer do you have a four in one. This time you've got a two in one on there for your ESCs. And that's simple because this thing's going to be rocking up to a 5S battery. It's going to have a ton of amps pumping through it, a ton of voltage. And uh, if you're cramming all that into like a 4-in-1 ESC, there's really, that's going to be a lot of heat in the board. So these ones here, these are 25 amp, I guess, Bell Heli S ESCs right there. So uh, they should be fantastic. But a point to note, this won't fit in your original Atom canopy, your Atom V2. Because of that extra stack, uh, you need to put on a different canopy. So you need to put on the canopies that come with the new Atom V3. And we'll talk about the canopies as well in a little bit. And then underneath, this is something I really like. Uh, this is your VTX PDB combo. Super simple, you can see we just hook up our battery leads right there. This is where we connect our VTX and your VTX, you can change all the channels and all that sort of stuff through the OSD settings. Super, super easy to do, so you can do it when you're actually using your radio. And you've got a little UHFL connector right there. I'm not the biggest fan of those. I do think they're better than the RP SMA connectors, but they also can, uh, I guess, snap off or pop off if you're flying around in a hard crash. And that's why I was pretty pleased to see, if you look at here, this is just like a little boring part, but you know, you guys might be interested. Right here, we've got this little plus sign. Um, it looks like a plus sign. Maybe you guys can see it if I get it in the right light. That bit right there sits over the top of the connector so it's going to stop it snapping off. So it's not just nice to see that wasn't on the original Atom V2. It's nice to see the little touches like that. And also, these little parts, these squares, it makes it very, very easy to put it inside your frame. It's going to sit in there perfectly and be nice and snug. Now, of course, it's got all the bells and whistles of pretty much the most modern VTXs out there now. You know, smart audio, all that sort of stuff. You can change it through the radio, like I mentioned, and you can also adjust its power levels. And look, it makes it super easy when you want to get set up, get ready to fly. You're ready to rock and roll. I'm a massive fan of this cube. Now on the other end, this is something that I think is a massive upgrade. So right here, we've got some Brother Hobby Tornado T1s. These are the Rotor X versions and uh, they're a 1407 motor, 2800 kV. Now why is that so special? And I would say because the KV on here, look, it's not off the chain. It's not super high. I've definitely seen some higher KVs in the past, but because this thing is designed to run some, like look at this crazy battery, a 5S battery, this is the right KV to use because if you went higher than this, you would be cooking motors left, right, and center. And I think the 1407s are the perfect size as well if you're gonna be rocking some four inch or uh, I guess some light four inch or some aggressive three inch props. So I'm a massive fan of the motors and they feel really coggy. Look, I've, I've had a lot of motors come across the bench and I think it's very hard to test how a motor's gonna go before you actually take it out and rip it around. And I can't wait to fly this thing. But uh, one thing I tend to find with the majority of good motors, they feel like a, a cogginess sort of in your hand. They don't feel loose at all when you're sliding around. You can feel the magnets are definitely doing some work inside there. So I think these motors are gonna absolutely rip. Now moving on, let's have a look at our FPV side of things. So at the front here, we've got our FPV camera. This is just a CMOS camera and I don't really think that's an upgrade because I'm a big fan of the CCD cameras and uh, unless you're getting one of the really high tech brand new things like the Runcam Eagle 2, but I don't think that's gonna be happening in a little small camera like this. And I did hear from the guys over there, with a bit of work, you can also mount something like this. So this is the Runcam, the new Runcam Micro, which is an absolute, you know, the Runcam Micro Swift, really cool FPV camera. So uh, it's gonna be nice if you wanna upgrade, you definitely can do that, put something like this inside. But you know, look, this thing should be pretty fine flying around. On the other end, we've got some different FPV antenna mounts. So we have, this is personally what I'm gonna use. This is a little whip antenna, so that's gonna be super lightweight for me. I'm going to be, it's all about keeping the atoms weight down because you know you're going to be flying around. But if you wanted to use something a little bit bigger like this, you can attach, you know, we've got a TBS Stumpy Triumph right here. We can just simply attach that out the back and you've got your little SMA connector up the top, your little adapter part, and that's just gonna simply sit at the back of the canopy. So we should talk about the canopies now as well. Something I really like about the Atom is just how cool they look and just how much you can stylize them, I guess, with these colors to make it their own. I think a big thing for a lot of people out there is just, you know, how does their quad perform? But a lot of people like to bling it up as well. Quads look very, very 
similar nowadays, so it's nice to see you get some different options uh, for your FPV canopy. And these ones are a little bit different to the original Atom V2 because they're made a little bit higher. So uh, because we needed to accompany that extra space in there for our extra ESC stack. But there's a whole bunch of colors. I'll flash some up on the screen. Personally, you know, what one do you think you guys would use? I'm seeing like a bit of an American theme going on over here. America. But uh, I don't know. I think I'm going to use the red one. I think I'm a bit partial to that one. So I'll probably be mixing that up with some props as well. Now the props you get, these are the 3044 tri-blades. These are the Rotor X version. And the good part about this is about getting these props, every getting everything in a DIY kit. When you build it up, you know that it's going to have a good tune because they're only working with one set of components. And, you know, they can really optimize how it's going to fly. They don't have to take into account are people going to be rocking different props, different motors, anything like that. That's one really cool thing about getting the whole kit. You you know you're gonna have a really a rock solid tune. Now some of the little less exciting parts I guess, look you got some things like these are your FPV camera mounts, they're just some flexi TPU that you can use, you simply screw your camera into those, or so put those to the side. You do get your little XT30 uh, battery connector and do note that it is XT30 and that's because the batteries you get with it, or uh, XT30 as well. So put that to the side, we have some little LEDs, I was super pumped for these and I can't wait to put these on here. That's also going to hold in, it's got some cool little holes in here as well, you can program these LEDs to do whatever you want, so there are a whole bunch of colours. And you can also run your antennas out the back, but it doesn't fit on the 4-inch version, which is probably the one I was most excited to build. So I'm not sure if I'm going to include these if I build the 4-inch version. If I was going to build up the 3-inch version, I would include them, no worries at all, because uh, the Atom looks so good. I think you can make a really, really good looking quad. Of course, they go underneath when your quad is flying around this way, so when you're burning past your mates, you can tell exactly uh, who's zooming past. And then, of course, probably the part that seems the most crazy, we've got some 5S batteries. So the battery, right? here this battery is a 75 C battery well that's what it says anyway and look take the C rating with a grain of salt but I definitely don't think Rotor X is a company at all to overstate what they do they're really really top-notch stuff so I would say look 75 C might be accurate for these batteries I, I would much prefer trusting this because it, look it is like a bonker battery I'd much have a lot more faith in this C rating than some of the other crazy ones out there and uh, you know this one's an 850 milliamp hour battery but it's 5S. I just want you to think for a minute. Most pilots out there nowadays are flying around on 4S. Then sometimes, look, people build a craft for 5 and 6S and it's usually like a big crazy 5-inch uh, racer. These bad boys, can you imagine having something like this on 5S? It is going to be... At, like it actually is going to be insanity and I'm really wondering how fast is that going to go through the air? I think it's going to absolutely scream. I can't overstate that enough. I think uh, if you put one of these batteries in there, it is going to absolutely rip. And I think that's a good thing about the Atom because I was talking to the guys and they said, look, it's aimed at all sorts of pilots. If you want to go 3S, that might be for beginners. 4S is for most pilots and uh, 5S is just for those people who are bad crazy. So I think I'm pretty excited about using this one actually. I can't wait to hit it with Speed Gun Sally and see just sort of what speeds we can get in the part 2 video. Now there is this Rotor X charger as well that came in my little pack. I don't, that's not included in the DIY kit or anything like that but uh you know this might be good for 2 or a 3S battery or even a 4S but one thing I did note how am I going to charge my 5S batteries? I'm going to have to go put this on one of my other chargers because uh there's no point at the moment using this charger. Don't get this charger if you're going to get 5S batteries because the charger doesn't have an option for 5S, you know, not that I'm aware of. If there is, I'll stick something in the comments, but as far as I researched it, I can't see any way. I can only see, you know, your 2S, 3S, and 4S ports at the front. No option to charge a 5S Rotor X battery. So I'd say just skip on the charger if you're going to be jumping over and using some 5S batteries anyway. So with all that said and done, look, I'm going to build one of these. I think I'm going to build the 4-inch because I've just built the Japalura, which is a fantastic 3-inch. And I, I really want to fly this quad because I had a lot of fun with my original Atom V2. And if you, I should also mention too, when you're going to build these, these things have some fantastic manuals. Hint, hint. I know they were written by somebody or with the help of somebody. I actually did help write uh, the original Atom v2 menu way back in the day probably over a year ago or something it feels like a very very long time ago but uh, I do know these things are super easy to build and uh, those guides are there to help you so definitely go and check those out I'll leave a link to that in the description as well I'll leave a link to all this in the description but uh, I think I'm going to build this one it's going to be super easy they recommend most people can do it in under 30 minutes so hopefully it's not going to take me that long let's get on with it uh, let's cut to what it looks like when you've actually got it all built up and then I'll tell you you know what pros and cons did I like about it and how the build came together so let's cut to what it looks like in three, two, one. Boop. 
Rightio, so there it is, all built, and of course I did use the four inch frame, I think we saw that was going to come the whole time, but uh, I have stuck the three inch props on here just to test how it's going to be, I don't think it's going to make that much difference in performance, but if I do want to step up to four inch, it definitely will be noticeable. Now the build was super straightforward, all up there is, I think there is 14 solder joints, I haven't put a receiver in here just yet because uh, something that, you know, I sort of learned this as I've, I've switched over to iBus, you know, because I fly my Turnergy Evolution, and I don't think iBus is supported on this flight controller. So I've been mucking around for a little bit trying to get that to work but uh, that part's a little bit frustrating because look I could be wrong and I definitely did go out and research this and you know I was trying to ask around and uh, I couldn't actually find a solution on how to get iBus to run on this. So I'm probably going to switch it over for SBus and I might even hook it up to my Tyrannus or my Freesco or something like that to take it out and rip it around. Now you will notice uh, as well as obviously not having the receiver in here. We have these two little ports right here, and these are usually where you screw it down. So uh, we haven't put those two screws in yet. Let's weigh it and see how much the thing weighs. So take your bets. Remember, this is the four inch frame. So it's coming in at, that can't be right, ounces. What are we on? Hang on, let's get rid of these units. Milliliters, grams, there we go. That's what most of the world uses. <laughs> It's coming in at 156 grams. Now what I want to do, we're going to also compare this to the weight of the Japalura because that's a four inch that I absolutely love. Three inch I should say, and that's coming in at 233 grams. So look, the Japalura, this thing is a little tank, but I absolutely love it. The Atom, on the other hand, you know, it's going to be able to rock some bigger props with its four inch base plate, and it is super light. So I imagine, then imagine this, with a 5S battery all up, what are we getting at? Whoa, 278 grams. If we went the smaller battery, what do we got? Is that gonna be under the two magic 250 gram mark? Because a 5S on this thing, 226 grams. Put your receiver in, you're under the 250 gram market and this thing is absolutely gonna rip. It's gonna go crazy on 5S, but you are probably gonna have some pretty short flight times with the 460 milliamp hour. You're gonna get much longer on the 850. Now, the whole time I've been talking, you know, talking about here, there is one extra part that I'm super excited to show you guys, and that is this little bad boy right here. So uh, what this is, this is your 1080p recording camera and that simply goes on the top and it's got a really, it's, it's super light because what that enables you to do you can actually put these two threads right here, the thread right down with a bolt. That's how it's powered by the TBS power cube inside there. You get these two bolts right here, you put them down, they're conductive. They're gonna go all the way down into the power cube with these back little bits right here. And that's how you're gonna power your camera. So as well as zipping around, you're gonna have a nice 1080p recording. Is it as good as something like the Runcam split? Well, look, this thing can do 4K, but only at 30 frames per second or 1080 at 60. Uh, I think the run cam split is a better solution, but it's still pretty awesome to be able to zip around and uh, have a super light, nimble little action camera. Probably the interesting part too, you know, can we still get under the 200 gram mark, the 250 gram mark with this HD thing? No, we can't actually do that. So with the HD camera, you're just going over if you're using the 5S battery. Now, overall, I think the Atom V3 looks absolutely sick. You know, I really like the red color theme that I've gone with and I know that it is going to absolutely rip when we take it out. We're definitely, I can't wait to hit it with the speed gun, so definitely stay tuned for part two because I think this thing, especially on a bat crazy 5S battery, is going to turn a lot of heads. So there it is. There's my part one review of the Rotorex's Atom V3 and uh, definitely stay tuned because in part two we're going to take it out to the field, rip it around. I'll show you guys some DVR and also some of that nice juicy HD footage with the Rotorex cam. And then most importantly, we'll hand it over to Grumpy Trev and the big one I want to see, let's put a 5S battery on this, let's hit it with Speed Gun Sally and see uh, just how fast we can get this because, you know, I got that Speed Gun for you guys, so let's put it to the test and drop it in the comments below how fast do you think, what with this, you know, with the three inch props, how fast in miles per hour do you think we're going to get the Rotorex's Atom V3 on a 5S pack because uh, I actually have no idea. I've never, I've seen some bigger quads go pretty fast on 5S, but the original Atom V2 was crazy fast on like a 3S LiPo. So uh, this bad boy on 5S, I, I don't even know what to expect. I, I know it's gonna be fast, I just don't know how fast. Anyway, enough rambling from me. Definitely drop it in the comments down below. How fast is it gonna go? Subscribe for more FPV related content and as always, happy flying. Alrighty, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Definitely subscribe if you're new to the channel and check out these videos. And I'm also going to leave a little link here to my Patreon page because I've got some fantastic Patreon supporters and I like to give back to them as well. So if you want to join the UAV Futures family, there's things like bonus Velcro straps, little bundles of FPV goodies and things like that that also get sent out. Anyway, happy flying.